we are discussing tumors of the ovary we have already discussed serious tumors of the ovary they are benign mucinous tumors borderline mucinous tumors and malignant mucinous tumors first of all we are going to discuss benign mucinous tumors these tumors are less common than serous tumors they form about 75 to 85 percent of all mucinous tumors the peak incidence is seen in 40 to 50 years of age they are commonest epithelial tumors in pregnancy they are rare before puberty and after menopause gross features they are bilateral in 5% of cases they are large tumors mucin filled multi locular having smooth external surface and the inner lining is columnar the gelatinous fluid which is present is rich in glycoproteins some of these tumors are recorded to be more than 30 kg of weight now the histological features the mucinous tumors they have endocervical or intestinal type of epithelium the cysts and papillary structures are lined by single layer of columnar cells with clear apical mucin and basally placed nuclei or intestinal type of epithelium with presence of goblet cells the wall is fibrocollagenous the mucinous tumors may be having panath or argyrophilic cells their variants include cyst adenoma adenofibroma and cyst adenofibroma immunohistochemistry they are ps positive because of glycoprotein present in the mucinous material cytokeratin positivity in most of the cells which are present in the tumor now this photograph which is a gross uh, appearance of benign serous tumor show that it is multiloculated the histological feature which is present in this photograph shows that it is lined by endocervical type of epithelium with basally placed nuclei the treatment of the benign mucinous tumor is surgical excision of the tumor but the most important thing is thorough sampling of the tumor so that one can rule out borderline or malignant tumors borderline mucinous tumor they comprise up to 10 to 15% of all mucinous tumors their peak incidence is in 30 to 50 years of age those tumors which have got uh, intestinal type of lining epithelium are more common and are slightly seen in later age group then those tumors having endocervical type of lining elevation of serum inhibin are seen in certain cases the gross features it is seen that 5% of the tumors having intestinal type of epithelium are bilateral whereas 50% of the tumors having endocervical type of lining are bilateral benign and borderline tumors they constitute about 80% of the mucinous tumors in borderline mucinous tumors the size ranges from 15 to 20 cm in diameter the gross appearance is similar to that of benign mucinous tumors but the cyst lining shows bulging masses and papillary projections those tumors having intestinal type of epithelium they are slightly larger in size histological features there is increase in crowding of glands papillary and cyst the glands are branching with nuclear atp and stratification but there is no destructive stromal invasion of the ovary the tumor cells are usually mucin filled with irregular nuclei large prominent nuclei and increased mitotic activity the lining epithelium shows mixed differentiation of endocervical and intestinal type of epithelium the tumors made of predominantly of endocervical type of cells are associated with infiltration by acute inflammatory cells foreign body giant cells they are present when cyst containing mucin are ruptured there is a group of typically benign or borderline mucinous tumor which arise in endometriosis and they are termed as mullerian mucinous cyst adenoma which resembles endometrial or cervical type of epithelium similarly there is a second group of tumors which have abundant gland like or papillary growth with nuclear atp and stratification their appearance is very similar to that of tubular adenoma or villus adenoma of the intestine these tumors are precursor lesions of the cyst adenocarcinoma i repeat 
that these tumors are precursor lesions of cyst adenocarcinoma. Immunohistochemistry is not very specific in this uh, borderline mucinous tumor. Treatment is surgical excision of the tumors which are confined to the ovaries and they may be associated with the recurrence, spread or rarely leads to death. So the patient should be kept under observation. Again, I will insist that once the specimen of the tumor is received for histology, thorough sampling of the tumor should be carried out to exclude the areas of invasive malignant tumor. Now the gross feature of borderline mucinous tumor show thick wall with a lot of papillae which are containing mucinous material. The histological features you can well appreciate that there are numerous papillary structures containing mucin and they are not infiltrating the ovarian stroma. Malignant mucinous tumors. They make up about 5 to 10 percent of all mucinous tumors. Their peak incidence is around 40 to 70 years of age. There are elevated levels of inhibin and CA125 in the serum. Regarding the gross pathology, they are bilateral in 15% of cases. They are in the form of cystic spaces mixed with solid masses and papillae. Sometimes the tumor is completely solid. There are areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. Histological features, they consist of that the tumor is highly cellular containing crowded glands. There are cyst formation, there are papillae or there are solid sheets, stratification of the mucinous cells. There is stromal invasion by single or group of cells or glands. The stroma of the ovary show desmoplastic reaction. The cells with hyperchromatic nuclei with eosinophilic cytoplasm containing mucin form signet ring appearance. Atypical mitosis are present. Large pools of extracellular mucin are also seen. They are usually associated with histocytes rather than a foreign body type of giant cell reaction. The variants include mucinous carcinoma which is arising in mucinous adenofibroma. Aminohistochemistry, cytokeratin 7 and 20 are positive. CA positive cytoplasmic staining, vimentin negative. Now you can see gross appearances of a malignant mucinous tumor. There are cystic areas containing papillary projections along with solid areas. In addition, you can also appreciate areas of hemorrhage. Regarding the histological features, you can well appreciate that there are papillary structures or solid sheets of cells which are present in the pools of mucin. These solid group of tumor cells are infiltrating the ovarian stroma. Risk factors and molecular genetics. Smoking is one of the commonest risk factor. Mutation of KRAS proto-oncogene are seen in benign mucinous cyst adenomas in 50% of cases, 70 to 80% in borderline mucinous tumors and 85% in primary ovarian mucinous carcinomas. Treatment is surgery with chemotherapy depending on the stage and grade of the tumor. Five-year survival rate is present in 40% of cases. Recurrence often seen as mets in the lungs. Now there is a condition which is called Krukenberg tumor. They are metastatic tumors in ovaries. They are mucin secreting adenocarcinoma with signet ring cell arising from an extra genital source. Breast and gastrointestinal tract are commonest primary sites. They may contain goblet cells in the stroma. They are usually bilateral. There is a clinical condition which is known as pseudomyxoma peritonei and it is defined as extensive mucinous societies, cystic implants which are epithelial in nature on the peritoneal surfaces, adhesions and frequently mucinous tumor involving ovaries. Pseudomyxoma peritonei, if extensive, may result in intestinal obstruction and death due to primary ovarian mucinous neoplasm. Extra ovarian primary mucinous tumor with secondary ovarian and peritoneal spread can be seen because majority of the primary mucinous tumors are unilateral. Bilateral presentation of mucinous ovarian tumors always require exclusion of non-ovarian in origin.